Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mormonish. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Landon. And we have an Easter special for you, don't we, Landon? Happy Easter. Happy Easter from Mormonish. That's right. We are going to talk about Easter and Mormon Easter. <laughs> <laughs> there's a difference? <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. We're going to talk about that, aren't we? All right. I had tons of fun with AI putting this together. So I'm really excited. If we look at this picture, Easter, you can see this incredible array of floral arrangements and decorations and pomp and circumstance. Go back one, please. And then, of course, on the other picture where it says Mormon Easter, you kind of see like, <laughs> sacrament meeting, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boy, they really did decorate for Easter, don't yeah, they? Yeah, <laughs> they went all out. So, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into this later. So, but but you see the direction we're going. All right, let's go to the next slide. So, Easter season, we are hearing the words. Haven't we always celebrated Easter? Mormons are saying this, right? And I've been on several different programs where I have said, no, we haven't all of, always celebrated Easter. And I kind of felt like I needed to clarify what I had been saying because I've gotten some pushback on this from people saying, of course, we celebrate Easter. But I'm talking about Easter in the sense that all the rest of Christianity celebrates it, right? And always has. Mormon Easter has been very different in the past although we're noticing a big change and we're going to go into that too. Again, I'm really proud of this AI for our listeners. It's a wonderful picture of Jesus with an Easter bunny and some Easter eggs. Well, the, the biggest thing I've seen on Mormons celebrating Easter is they always celebrate it on Saturday. Uh, yes. All the egg hunts, all the yeah. family get togethers. You might have a ham dinner on Sunday, but all the activities uh, are, yeah. are generally associated with Saturday. Yep, that's true. And, and that's true. You got to get it out of the way so you can go to church on Sunday. <laughs> that's it. You got to get, well, and that's true of any holiday though. If Halloween follows uh, falls on Sunday, you definitely shut down your neighborhood by celebrating on Saturday, right? <laughs> and, well, and we wouldn't want a religious LDS. holiday to fall on Sunday. That's, yes. uh, <laughs> yes. Well, Easter is always on Sunday. So there uh, you go. Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> All right. Let's go to our next slide. Okay. So, we're going to talk about, haven't we always celebrated Easter, Mormon Easter? And I'm going to say, no, we haven't. And I'm going to explain this because like I said, I've gotten some pushback on me just kind of flippantly saying this. So I want to kind of explain what I meant. So I pulled up this article. Um, it was from 10 years ago, actually. And the title of it is called Easter, Not Important to Mormons. And of course, then it has a chocolate bunny as a decorate, as an illustration. And what does that say, Landon? I feel hollow inside. <laughs> it's hilarious. But okay, so it says, according to a 2010 survey by Keith Wilson, associate professor at Brigham Young University, Easter is hardly more important to Mormons than any other Sunday service. Remembering the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus is almost completely overshadowed by what else is the big event that happens for Mormons in April? General Conference. That's right. General Conference, which the Mormon church convenes every first weekend of April, a weekend that sometimes coincides with Easter. And in my lifetime, five and a half decades, it's happened quite often. So let's go to and, the next slide. And if it doesn't correspond with a uh, conference, it's the Sunday before usually or after. And since conference is the first weekend, they always move fast Sunday oh, on one of those two Sundays. So yeah, do not <laughs> remind me of the times as a kid when I would come downstairs to the Easter basket. And remember, my family was a 24 hour fast family. Like you fasted for 24 hours and we would come downstairs and we'd go, oh, this is awesome. But we knew we couldn't eat it. We couldn't eat anything <laughs> until the evening. And we had to go to church. Yeah, it was torturous on a, on a kid, for sure. What a holiday. Um, <laughs> what a special holiday. That's right. So again, LDS April General Conference. That's our next slide. And I think it's true. That really is the culminating event in April, isn't it? That's what everybody prepares for. And you made the observation that it's more about... Do you remember what you said? It's more about the, about the, the leadership. Leader. Yeah, it's more about yeah. the leadership. In fact... That as as conference is coming up, what do they always say? Oh, get out and start reading the last conference talks. Get prepared. Get in the spirit. Go to the temple the week before and be ready to hear the leaders. They don't say anything about, oh, 
study the life of Christ yeah. no. and, and the, the resurrection, it's no, get ready to hear the words of the prophets uh, that God has sent. Yep. It's more about living prophets and it's more about edicts. I think I still am stuck on that, that our guest mythos talked about, because I, I hadn't really seen that before, but it really is statements from the leaders at the top that direct everything. And that's our, that's our gospel. So you're right. That's what general conference is. And of course it does have all of its own ceremonies and traditions built around general conference. Like for example, we know that most people have been told to make donuts, right? Do you remember that? That that's a huge part of it, <laughs> especially for priesthood session. The men go to that and the women stay home and make donuts, right? There's all kinds of, I can't remember which leader said that. Do you remember that talk? I don't remember the donuts, but uh, I do know the men always go, we always went out for ice cream after you could never get into the yep. to Dairy Queen because in Utah, because it, you know, all ten thousand people uh, went to the same Dairy Queen. That's right, men in suits trying to get into Dairy yep. Queen. And when they made a women's conference, then it was like a big shopping day, and you'd go to Blue Lemon, and then you'd go. But yeah, there was one particular talk where one of the leaders said, you know, I love to go to priesthood session because then I know that the women are at home making donuts. So when we go home, we can enjoy the donuts because we have all the power and authority that men do. And we use that power and authority to make donuts. That's what we do. But uh, there's but again, a hole it, in that theory. There's a hole in that theory. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're already getting spicy. And we're like four minutes into the program. So. I like the, I like the, uh, the uniforms of the uh, tabernacle choir there. The, the women look like Easter eggs, don't they? Yes, don't look yes. like they've been dyed. Yep. They, they all seem to, you know, and once I saw that documentary, keep sweet, pray and obey and how Warren Jeffs loved those pastels. Every time I see the choir, they always seem to be in these very pastel colors, which you don't necessarily see on women of a certain age, unless you're like the queen of England, right? Uh. Loving to wear that, that bright blue, <laughs> that Robin's egg blue. So it is interesting. What is well, it she was pastel? a fashion icon. Uh, he was a fashionista. Her. That's exactly yes. right. So anyway, and I'm not, you know, I'm not saying anything against general conference because I myself had, had, you know, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I I've told you all before that we did not have a television set until my grandparents went on a mission when I was a teenager. And they said, Oh my gosh, these kids need to be socialized. They need a TV. They don't even know who Scooby-Doo is. So they, gave us their television. But prior to that, during conference, my parents would rent a TV. And that was such a huge event because I'd have to rent it for the whole weekend. So I, you know, binge watched everything I could. And then on Sunday, we would watch conference on this rented TV. So, you know, it has some nostalgia <laughs> for me, for sure. I know. I know. I can't even tell enough stories about my strange upbringing, but it was, it was, it was mine. I'll own it. So, <laughs> anyway, the point is that oftentimes general conference is what we're told to focus on in that time period of spring. That's what we're told to prepare for, to hear the talks of leaders. And that's what we buy a new dress for, right? To go to conference. So I thought and, it was a very valid point. And let's face it. I think we all looked forward to general conference more than we looked forward to Easter because we didn't have to go to church. <laughs> you could well, I was gonna say you could stay in your pajamas, not at my house. We put on our Sunday clothes. To oh walk, but, God yeah. bless you. I know. I know. I'm telling you, there's a reason I'm a post-Mormon podcaster. <laughs> we had to watch the Sunday sessions, but that didn't mean we had to stay awake. <laughs> okay, see, and that's great. That that's exactly it. You should be in your pajamas, you should be passed out. That is how the word of the Lord should be transmitted. I'm telling you, that's it. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next slide. I think we're going to talk some more about this survey. Oh yeah, so interesting. Um, so I'll read about half of it and then you read half because it's kind of long. So um, this is that same professor that um, conducted this survey kind of informally in 2010. And this is actually from a Deseret News article of the same era. And he says, but in LDS Remembrance General Conference, totally overshadows Easter. Wilson, the professor who ran the study, said he thinks Latter-day Saints could overcome both the general conference timing and the holidays moves around the calendar with a wider acknowledgement of the historic events that led to Easter Sunday celebration of Christ's resurrection, suggesting it might help to remind members on Palm Sunday of the events that happened during Holy Week. So this is 14 years ago, and somebody is kind of alluding to the fact that most LDS people have no idea what Palm Sunday is, what Holy Week is, but this professor is saying, this is something that has some value and that maybe we do need to know this as a Christian community. 
He says, my well, do you student think he, uh, he said uh, at wider acknowledgement of historic events. Uh, I think uh, the church has a history of hiding historic events, and maybe that's why they've hidden Easter. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. It's just kind of an afterthought. Yeah, I don't know. And we can talk about that later, but it is an interesting phenomenon. So he says, my students did a little poll this year, 350 to 400 of them. And this is, I'm assuming at BYU, they said he was a BYU professor, and only two to 3% of their wards even mentioned Palm Sunday. I would agree with that. I've never heard that mentioned in church in all my you know, decades that I've gone. It's like we're afraid that another Christian fabrication of mainstream Christianity, and we don't want to buy into it. His survey respondents ranked their family's celebration of Easter a distant third behind Christmas and Thanksgiving with only slightly more planning than the 4th of July, he said. Do you want to read the, the rest of that? Yeah, the Thanksgiving celebration is much more intense for LDS families, and Christmas is off the charts. <laughs> it's kind of an awkward juxtaposition when people like former LDS church president Gordon B. Hinckley declare in clarion tones that Easter celebrates the most important event in all of human history, but there's his disc disconnect with the LDS observance of it. Look, what we do to prepare for Christmas, caroling, ward parties, advent calendars that help you count down to the holiday— Wilson said, for most Latter-day Saints, we have nothing like that for Easter, yet it rightfully should be the celebration of all celebrations. While there is no formal church-wide celebration of Easter Sunday in the LDS Church, pockets of Christ-centered activities are scheduled by some local stakes and regions. Yeah, and I think that this professor absolutely um, hit it on the head. That's exactly right. And um, They do talk about it being the culminating event, and yet... And like he said, in some stakes and regions and wards, and I'm sure some of you watching will go, no, we had a wonderful Easter celebration in our ward, but that's not what everybody's experience was. It's very different. And, and I think what he's describing here is what we're hearing um, in conference the last couple of years, where they're saying this should be an amazing time. This should be just as exciting as Easter, somebody said, in, or as Christmas, somebody said in conference. So I think they're trying to figure out how to do this, how to introduce this into the LDS culture. What do you think? I think it's interesting that he said uh, that it's another Christian fabrication uh, mm -hmm. of mainstream Christianity. We don't want to copy it. That's what the Christians do. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, oh, that 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 came about with the Catholics, yet we yep. celebrate Christmas that came from, uh, uh, that was really a Roman holiday previously. Yep. <laughs> so we have no problem jumping in there. But uh, uh, here, when we actually know what the date uh, would have been if you uh, if you believe in all of this that it happened, then we know that that it would have happened at Passover, just like the scriptures say. So you could figure out when it would be. So mm -hmm. at least we're celebrating at the right time, but we don't celebrate it because Christians celebrated it. Yeah. Yep. And that, we're going to talk about that um, in a couple of slides here, but that's exactly when I was growing up, the perception. I didn't really understand why, but I had friends of other denominations. I had some Baptist friends. I had some Presbyterian friends, and they would do um, these activities around Easter that were very different from what we were doing. And my parents would say something like, well, that's what Christians at large do. You know, that like we're different from that. We are not doing that. And I got the sense that it was in a sense that we don't do that kind of, but I, I didn't really understand why. So it's, it was been interesting for me to dig into it and try to figure out wh why was there that attitude and why is it changing now? I feel. So yeah, did we you have that a, sense? We had a lady in our ward. I can't remember where she was from Romania or something. And she would tell us she was grew up in the Romanian Orthodox or whichever country it was. And I, I can't remember, but she said on Easter morning, there would be like a, a challenge and you, you'd say something like uh, the, the king is dead. And then they'd say, but he has risen. The, someone, so as you passed each other on the uh, on the sidewalk, you, you'd you say that kind of as a thing. Right. So, I mean, it was a huge holiday. People are are very much celebrating Christ at that time. Right. Uh, but we don't want to be a part of that. <laughs> no, and I don't think that uh, Mormons at large understand what a huge week-long celebration, even month-long celebration, and we'll get into that, all the different events. And we do it the one Sunday and nothing else. Although, as I said, I believe this is changing. Uh, let's go to our next slide. 
Okay. So I kind of looked on social media. I always call it the interweb, like David Letterman, right? <laughs> I know that really dates me, doesn't it? <laughs> um, and I kind of just anecdotally picked up um, some people. A lot of people have been talking about this topic, about Mormons and Easter and what they see as a big change and what they see as almost being gaslit to say, oh, no, we've always done it this way. You know, people of a certain age are like, oh, you haven't. So I kind of picked up some things that people noticed about their own wards or visiting other wards. And again, I know a lot of you may have had different experiences, but definitely in some wards, this is what happened. Um, they said no special songs other than hymns on, a, on an Easter service. You would sing maybe some hymns that were more about the season. The, the, or three, Easter, the three Easter yeah. hymns that yeah. are in the book. <laughs> exactly. But nothing else. What's the next one, Landon? Uh, no talks on Easter or passages about Easter read from the pulpit. Yeah. It just doesn't seem to be more special than any other day. Yeah, um, it's, talk... it's our special Easter uh, missionary farewell with yeah. elder so-and-so because he's got to get it in before <laughs> general yeah. conference because he's not going to be here the next week. So we got to squeeze yeah. it in. <laughs> and that happens more often than not, doesn't it? Um, talks about Joseph Smith, living prophets, or a gospel topic. I Everything on this list I've experienced in my decades in the church. So, And again, it's not everybody's experience. But especially in the past, it really was just sort of another Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What's the next one? No special decorations. Have you ever noticed that only there's only one time they ever decorate the church? Have you ever noticed that? A funeral? After the funeral. Yeah. After oh. the <laughs> During the funeral, but after the funeral that Sunday, oh, they leave like they the leave flowers. all the flowers and it's all decorated because the church didn't buy those, you know, somebody left them yeah, there. Somebody the left them. Yeah, that, that's a very depressing that's how you know. uh, uh, history of the decoration. At yeah. church. So, oh, that's funny. Um, no special ceremonial element. And I know in other churches, and we'll talk about this later, there's a lot of ceremony that goes into that Easter Sunday yes. there, there, and even into Palm Sunday. Like that's a huge Sunday, the Sunday before Easter. And there are all kinds of ceremonies and things that people do that are very meaningful for Palm Sunday. But again, most Mormons until recently, I don't think had even heard of Palm Sunday. Um, and what's the last one? Uh, no change from a normal meeting. Yeah. Again. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a letdown when you drive past and you see all these come to our special Mormon service at Easter service. And then you go in and it's just a regular mm -hmm. sacrament meeting with a hymn or a, for Mormons, a special sacrament meeting means the choir is going to sing a number. <laughs> exactly. No. And there was one post that I read, like I said, all this is gathered from, you know, just kind of the general buzz on social media. One post said um, that they had a friend that they took to Easter service. And afterwards she said, uh, why did your church choose to have their administrative meeting on Easter? You know, because in her church, in her Christian church, there are some Sundays when you have more of an administrative meeting and you talk about, you know, mission trips and things. And that's how she as an outsider took the entire sacrament meeting, that it was sort of an administrative meeting, <laughs> meaning absence of sort of religion or talk of Jesus or anything. So very interesting. It was probably a missionary farewell. It was probably a missionary fair. Or no, I'm guessing maybe it was, well, they wouldn't do this on Easter, but like a sustaining or a high council. Who yeah, knows? Could, could you know? be, could, they, they may have tried to squeeze a ward uh, conference in there before <laughs> general conference. So you never know. <laughs> no, we don't know how weird we are. We honestly don't until we start visiting other churches. Then we're like, oh, now I see how they see us, right? <laughs> yeah, I I mean, I had ne I'd never really went to any other churches when I was in. I think I went to one or two when I was on my mission, you know, wearing our tag. So we yeah. went in there to cause havoc or whatever. But, <laughs> uh, you know, I'd, I sit and see these choirs that these other churches put on. And, oh, my gosh, they're, they're, they're rocking it, you know, uh, yeah. and praise and sing hallelujah. And, oh, you do and that the, really the whole well, place Landon. is rocking and you just fill in the the yeah. the vibe you know yeah uh it, it's a whole different one when you're sitting there you know uh, all those opposed <laughs> yeah and then in the background <laughs> right it's so funny how you're not used to when you step away for a while and you go back you're like has it always been this noisy it's really interesting you get really used to it going all the time and then when you go back you're really surprised so but now, and I, I've told the story before about a family member who was on his mission decades ago and, and he met a, I think it was a Presbyterian woman as a missionary. And he said, okay, 
we'll come to your church. If you'll come to our church, we'll come to your church one Sunday. And then the next Sunday you come to our LDS church. And she's like, okay. So this family member and his companion, they go to her church and he's like, we walked in there. There was singing, there were decorations, there was a donut bar, there were coffee, you know, and he, at the end of it, he was like, I'm embarrassed to bring her to the, to the LDS <laughs> part because why would she leave? This is incredible, you know? So yeah, a lot of people don't know what happens in, in other traditional churches every Sunday. They do not understand. So, but I think we're moving that direction and we're going to talk about that. Okay, let's go to our next slide. Okay, so here's the question. Why don't we, meaning uh, the the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, celebrate Easter like the rest of Christianity? Because there has been a difference, although the needle, I believe, is moving now. So let's try to talk about this. Why don't we celebrate Easter like others? So I went, of course, to Fair Mormon, where you get all the answers that you need to know, right? And I looked up Easter. And why don't you read this first one, Landon? Because I thought this was really interesting. At some point, some or many Christians got into the habit of teaching the story of Jesus with what is called a liturgical calendar, in which an extra observance of an event related to Christ's ministry is made by the way the Eucharist or Mass is conducted by many Christians. The reason for this liturgical celebration done by the Roman Catholic Church in Latin until recently was to teach the message found, especially the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, to their followers. But the traditional liturgical worship pattern is not set out in the New Testament. It is not biblical, but a tradition growing out of piety and necessity. Ah, so what does that mean to you, Landon? I don't know. Uh, it sounds like they're saying because they 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 made up a calendar that celebrates certain points of Jesus's life uh, or or things that Jesus did that we don't follow that. But uh, it, it's kind of it. They're basically saying a holiday has to be biblical to be a holiday. Yes. But what about Pioneer Day? That's yes. not biblical. <laughs> well, that's a whole different thing. We'll cover that. We'll maybe do a special Pioneer episode. But to me, it means that this, and this actually, this whole train of thought was triggered by something that RFM said on the Mormon newscast that I do with Bill Real and RFM. And, and I kind of talked a little bit about Easter um, on that. And he said, of course, these traditions were seen as you know, the great and abominable church, right? These were Catholic traditions. They were not in the Bible. They were, you know, ceremonies that were made up that were not, you know, with that religious context. And so that's why we kind of, you know, no, we don't do that, right? That's not what we do. It's not biblical. It's something that was made up, you know, in the apostasy, basically. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and that explains, and maybe I'm not explaining it perfectly, but that explains why I always got the sense from my parents that that's what they do. We don't, you know, because it was associated with the rites, the traditions, the ceremony that, that LDS people kind of don't do that, right? We don't have any of that in our uh, normal meetings. The temple, yes, but not our normal meetings. I think we need to say we didn't do that. Oh, I think maybe you're right. Don't. Yeah. As we move forward, we'll find out that's not quite correct. So anyway, I thought that was really interesting that maybe that was looked at as something from the apostasy, right? Something that Mormons don't do. Uh, let's keep going through fair Mormon. Okay. So uh, the liturgical calendar was created by the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. See, it's associated with Catholicism. Holidays, feast days, and other celebrations were created by these churches to teach the Middle Ages Christians about events described in the Bible, which most followers did not have access to or read themselves. The cathedrals of this time period were also filled with paintings, boss reliefs, and statues for the same purpose. If you look up liturgical year in Wikipedia, you'll see many feasts and holidays which celebrated the following events. The Nativity of Christ, the Epiphany of Christ, Resurrection of Christ, Pentecost, Transfiguration of Christ, and Crucifixion of Christ. And I pulled up this calendar here, and you can see that every month there are special days throughout that follow Christ's life in the Bible. So what I'm seeing here is this is basically they created it for a population that uh, couldn't read. Mm -hmm. And so it was so that they could remember the activities in the book. They'd celebrate it. 
uh, almost kind of like what we talk about with Dr. Lundwall, uh, an oral yeah. society, and mm -hmm. will will have a lot of pictures and a lot of uh, feasts and rituals that they will dance or act out because they can't read yep. uh, or the main membership can't. So uh, rather than this being a Catholic thing, it was more of a human thing and how they remembered it and how those traditions got passed on to us today uh, because they were able to keep, keep them alive by doing those very actions. Yep, I think that's true. However, the roots, of course, it was created by the by Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. And so I think that's why, you know, in Mormonism, at least in the past, we tend to say, no, you know, we, we're not going to have anything to do with those traditions because they were created by the church in the apostasy. Do you think that's accurate? Uh, yeah, but so was the Bible. And uh... <laughs> <laughs> Landon always has to point things out like that. Yes, so is the Bible. You're right. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next slide, which to me really sort of clarified the reason why we do not or did not celebrate Easter like other religions, other Christian religions. Uh, the central portion of Latter-day Saints... No, read the first, read the heading first. Oh, the heading? Where it says it. Latter-day Saints observe Christ's atonement by partaking of the sacrament every Sunday rather than observing events on the liturgical calendar. And that's it. And we've seen comments like this before, haven't we, on other episodes we've done where they say, we don't need this celebration. We celebrate the atonement every single Sunday. Don't, don't the Catholics take Mass like twice a week? Can't yeah. you go... Twice yeah. a week to mass. So yeah, we're not they, talking they, about them. We're talking about us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just going to say, if you do mass twice a week and you still have to celebrate the holidays, I, I guess once is good enough. Right, But I've heard people say my, I've heard my own parents say this, that we, we focus on the atonement all the time. We don't need, you know, this one special day or week where we're going to focus on it because for us it's every week and all the time. So go ahead and read the rest of this. The central portion of Latter-day Saint public worship is administering the flesh and blood of Christ unto the church, which is done according to the commandments of Christ. In the past, this was done by the elders and priests who kneel down and sanctify, the Greek word means to make holy, first the bread, an emblem standing for the body of Jesus Christ, and then the wine, changed to water or some liquid that can be safely consumed since the emblems are not the actual flesh and blood of the Lord. Glad they made that clarification. Yes. Which is done so that the saint, so that the saints, so that they will eat it in remembrance of the body of the Lord, and also will signify that they are willing to take upon themselves His name and remember Him and keep His commandments, so that they may always have His Spirit with them. Then the saints drink a bit of water in remembrance of His spilled blood on our behalf. Uh, this is done as a covenant renewal on most Sabbath days. Yeah. And that's kind of the difference. As I was reading through Fair Mormon, I got this sense that Mormons really focus on the covenant aspect of it. Our promises, renewing and recommitting our promises. Other Christian religions, not so much in that way, in that way. So I, that may have something to do with how we celebrate the whole Easter season. But it was very interesting to read through Fair Mormon. That, uh, that argument, though, to me, doesn't hold water or wine um, because... <laughs> Uh, we celebrate Christmas with all the rest of the Christian world right. and still take the sacrament. So why can't you celebrate the atonement on one day and still take the sacrament? Um, you're, you're picking and choosing your argument yeah. there. It seems like uh, yeah. one's okay. One's not. It, it, uh, that may be true. I just think Christmas is so beloved that there's no way you can't celebrate it. Maybe that's it. Yeah, but it wasn't always that way. So exactly. that that's a recent uh, phenomena, really, yeah. just in the last 100, 200 I years mean, yeah. that, Chris, that Christmas became a big celebration. Uh, I, I think Easter was always the larger celebration uh, up and uh, up until well, uh, up until just recently, last 200 years, maybe. Yeah. No, it might have to do with commercialism. Maybe it's very much easier to commercialize Christmas than Easter. I don't know. True. Different ideas. All right, let's look at our next slide. Okay, so this slide is called Cross Over the Cross. <laughs> and we have a picture of a woman wearing several crosses. Um, this is another phenomenon I've seen in the LDS church, and I've talked about this before that, and you probably noticed this too, Landon, that people seem to be wearing crosses, I, especially of a certain generation, like younger, younger than I am, of course, much younger. They're just wearing crosses routinely. Like they don't think anything of it. 
And of course, when I was younger, that was, that was absolutely, you did not do that. I, I told the story before about receiving a cross necklace from a boyfriend when I was 16 and my parents are like, take that off. They actually threw it away. So definitely a difference in wearing crosses. Have you noticed that? Uh, I noticed that you can wear lower cut uh, shirts if you have crosses on. According to your... There you go. That's what my AI. Sh- <laughs> I don't think that would fly in Mormon church. No, that <laughs> neither the cross either. nor the, <laughs> nor the dress. <laughs> That's right. But I definitely see the cross used more where it used to just be like, we don't, we don't sell it. We don't use the cross because we don't focus on the crucifixion, right? We focus on the resurrection. That was always what we were told. Yeah, although I believe they used crosses early in the church. Uh, yes, they did. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. There are a lot of pictures of pioneer women wearing crosses. So I think that might've been a maybe 20th century kind of a thing where they really, really wanted to stay away because there are a lot of pictures of pioneer women with crosses and they did use it. So interesting. Definitely. All right, let's go to our next slide. Okay, I have to say, so this is one of the perks of not celebrating Easter in the way that other Christians do or celebrating the cross when you live in live in Utah. Because when you go to the Easter candy aisle, even before Easter, nobody buys the chocolate cross and they're always 90% off. <laughs> so I have no problem eating the chocolate cross. I never had, even as an active LDS person. I don't care what form my chocolate is in. I'll eat it anyway. But yes, you can clean up on this because nobody else in Utah, at least, is going to buy the chocolate cross. They're always left in the discount bin and they're pretty good. How come they don't make like chocolate temples for Easter that you can buy? (laughs) I feel like we're headed that direction and we have some slides to show that uh, in a minute here. But yeah, so far all I've seen is crosses. So All of a sudden, this is the phenomenon we're going to be talking about, LDS Easter is busting out all over. And I'm sure a lot of you have noticed this. There is this huge, almost rediscovery of Easter among Mormons. It's really interesting. And I think it started maybe like two, I kind of noticed it post-COVID. Didn't you notice it? Uh, Like not before COVID. It seems like in the last like three years. It seems like there's been a couple of conference talks where they started talking about it. Um, Yeah. And that's exactly right. President Nelson wants to be the prophet who brought Easter back. You know, he's he's running out of things he can be known for. But so make Easter great again. That's what we're talking about. That's right. (laughs) Make Easter a holiday again. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go to our next slide. Um, So this is exactly what we're talking about. There are, let's see. Oops, oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. On the church's website, everyone just go there. You will see everything. There is an Easter initiative. There are um, prompts that you can get. Texts all about Holy Week, about Easter. There are ways to engage your children in Easter. Activities, messages, scripture verses, videos. Everything's available. Um, one of the articles said, we can't, while we can't be sure exactly what happened on each day of Holy week. So they're making sure to say, you know, this is kind of our interpretation. We can learn from the example Jesus Christ set through his whole ministry, um, expanded, expand each module below for daily learning experiences. And they have these whole expanded learning experiences with videos and messages and everything that you can do. Here is a social media post somebody shared with me about a primary teacher or a primary chorister who made a tomb. You can see that right there. This is incredible with a stone that you can roll back and forth and open it and Easter Holy Week cards. So people are absolutely embracing this new tradition. And again, there are just articles everywhere about how to celebrate this. It's not the Easter I grew up in. <laughs> that is what I'm trying to say. This is not, I mean, if you had walked into primary when you were a kid and there was a, a life-size tomb there, what would you have thought? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'd think now if I walked in and there was a life-size tomb like that. <laughs> anyway, I have to say props to this chorister because that is... Wow, that's going the extra mile. And I'm sure the kids will never forget this. So again, go to the church's website. It it is exploding with Easter messages and not just Easter, but Holy Week and Palm Sunday, which are things that we never heard before, ever. And those are just routinely discussed now. Next thing you know, we'll be celebrating Ramadan. So 
Anything's possible. All right, let's go to the next slide. Yeah, when that's Fast funny. Sunday falls on Easter. <laughs> that's right. When Fast Sunday's on Easter. That's right. So this just today, just today, I think this is from the article that I found in the Deseret News. Yeah, everybody's talking about this. And it says, um, today the church observes Easter with a special worship schedule shared only with Christmas, a one hour sacrament meeting specially focused on Jesus Christ. And that's true. They recently just changed Christmas and Easter to be a one hour program instead of having to do that run to your class, try to put your tomb together you know, and do all that. Um, so it says, I, I, I love Mormon thought, you know, while all the other churches, it's the big day you go to church. Mormons, yeah, how, how do you celebrate something? <laughs> We're cutting church. It's half the time. And everyone goes, Woo! <laughs> Woo, that's right. We can go home and have our Easter ham. That is actually really funny. Um, so the article says last year, Holy Week was used in a general conference talk for the first time. Um, it was Elder D. Todd Christofferson of the Quorum of the Twelve and Elder Mark W. Bassett of General Authority. And both of them noted Palm Sunday marked the start of Holy Week. And I took note of that last year. I was like, what did I just hear coming from the pulpit in conference? Holy Week? Palm Sunday? You know, and I thought back to my mom back in the 70s, she would have said, well, that's so Christian. Why are they saying that? You know what I mean? It's just, a, and she's a very Christian person, but it's just, they do that. We don't. It's just a very different tradition. Do you want to read this other excerpt from, from the uh, article? Just 21 years earlier in 1992, the unofficial Encyclopedia of Mormonism written by Latter-day Saint scholars, many of them BYU professors, stated that Latter-day Saints conduct Easter Sunday services, but do not follow the religious observances of Ash Wednesday Lent or Holy Week. So that's what they're saying in 1992. How interesting, but now things are moving a different direction. That remains true of specific observances familiar to Catholics and other Christians, but in general conference beginning in 2020 and in social media posts this week and on a new webpage, Latter-day Saint leaders now are referring to Palm Sunday and Holy Week. Yep. And they're referring it to like they are referring to it like they never did not refer to it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I always thought the church was like 20 years behind the times. Uh, it, it looks like they're about 2,000 years <laughs> behind the times here. Hey, it's never too late to repent and it's catch up. It's never too late to get started. All and believe it, they're prophetic when they make Super Bowl Sunday a religious holiday and half hour half hour church on, on Super Bowl Sunday. Or no church whatsoever. <laughs> That's right. And again, we should make this clear. While we're going through this, I'm actually excited by this change. I think this is wonderful that now kids and people can learn more about the Christian community at large and can understand some of these meaningful events. I think it's wonderful. I think it's a great thing. So they're trying. <laughs> All right, let's go to our next slide. Okay, so what I've noticed um, is just this surge of people trying to celebrate in the LDS community, Holy Week, Palm Sunday, all of these new concepts and ideas. So I gathered some of these. Um, I found a flyer from a ward that's doing a Holy Week egg hunt, Holy Week egg hunt. If you would have seen a flyer like that on your door when you were a kid, what would you have thought? It, it, that uh, the, the Catholics or uh, uh, yep. another Christian church was inviting me uh, yep. somewhere. Yeah, 100%. Um, there are signs outside of meeting houses all over. These are being reported that invite people. There's one that says Palm Sunday celebration. All are welcome. Easter Sunday services. Um, he is risen. These signs that have always existed in front of Christian churches, right? You always see those welcome signs. And the funny thing about these signs that I think is so interesting is they say, you know, join us 9 30, 11, 12 30, as if you could choose which one you wanted to go to, because you know that once you're there, they're going to say, where do you live? And then they're going to try to figure out which one you have to go to. <laughs> but this is what other Christian signs look like in front of Christian churches that you could choose your service. Yeah, because if I could choose, I wouldn't be going to the 930 one. <laughs> I once had 730 church, 730 a.m. I don't know how I survived. I was a teenager. Yeah. we. Uh, uh, I was with my daughter this week, and we were going out to dinner, and we passed. In fact, it could even be that church in the lower uh, the, the lower picture there, uh, if that's in Draper. But we passed it, and uh, 
she looked at it and, and my daughter hasn't gone to church probably for 10, 12 years now. And she, she saw that and she's like, what, what is that? <laughs> she said, I, I could buy that sign being on one of the other churches over there, but when did Mormons start yeah. celebrating? She knew it right away. And we weren't even discussing church. We were just driving along yeah. and she saw the sign and went, what is that? Yeah. In that case, you're supposed to say, no, we've always we've celebrated. Always celebrated. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But there's even an article um, in the Tribune there where uh, there's a book that they're advertising that helps members get more out of uh, Christian Holy Week. You know, er, er, and there's a book called From Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. Like we're just taking these baby steps like we're playing catch up to the rest of the Christian world. And we're just learning how to do it. So it's really interesting. And once you start being aware of that and looking for it, you see this everywhere. You see, you know, Deseret book, you see Seagull book, you see websites, you see articles. They're really trying to make this time frame special, which again, it's that's great. I think that's wonderful. The only problem I have is please don't tell us that we've always done it. Say something like, this is brand new. We're just starting this because we haven't always done it. 300%. 300%. There you go. All right. Um, so our next slide, oh, like I talked about products and things, right? To help us celebrate. So there are Holy Week cards. These are from Deseret Book. There is, they're calling it an Easter crush. Now that's not correct because a crush is specifically like an, a, a manger and a nativity scene. But you can see all of the players, the major players in the resurrection. There's one dragging a cross behind them. And I made the joke that I would get this for my mom for <laughs> Easter because she would, she would, I will not get that. No, but I just had that thought, wow, you know, if she even saw that in Deseret book, I wonder what she would think because it's so different than anything we had growing up. All these things from the wider and broader Christian traditions of celebrating Holy Week and celebrating Easter. And they're all available. I have to say, I think the one on the left is really cute, right? Kind of the little people version and you can kind of play resurrection. I like it. Play resurrection. <laughs> well, don't we I have to be Jesus? <laughs> yes. Don't we have manger scenes? We do. And in fact, I remember a conference talk, I think two years ago, and I can't remember who did it, but um, who gave it, but somebody was saying this should be like Christmas. We should have pageants. We should have celebrations. Easter should be bigger than Christmas in all the activities that we set around it. So they're definitely trying to nudge the membership that direction, that this should be as special with as many activities as Christmas. Well, there you go. It's a there you go. kinder, I know, it's gentler church than when a I A kinder, up. gentler church, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, participating in the broader uh, Christian tradition. So this I thought was interesting. We talked about the cross before, and I have seen more, you know, a lot more of the LDS people wearing crosses or utilizing Christian type jewelry. Um, Deseret Book, they haven't gone as far as selling crosses, but what they do have is this necklace called the Empty Tomb. And I've seen this in other Christian websites too. And it is to represent, you know, the resurrection more than the crucifixion because he has stepped out of the tomb and he lives again. And of course, I said facetiously that it reminded me a little bit of a taco. I wasn't sure exactly what it was. And then I thought maybe the theme was we're all an empty shell without Jesus. You know, of course my mind went there, but it's not, it's, it's the empty tomb necklace. So, and it's a tie tack. Would you wear that tie tack landed? No, I, I, what? I got you that for Easter. What are you talking about? Now I'm going to have to get my money. I don't wear a tie anymore. Oh, that's right. Okay. Sorry. Maybe you can clip it to your lapel. This, this reminds me of a Seinfeld episode. You know, it's like, Hey, let's make some Easter jewelry, but we can't make a cross. What should we do? Yeah. Let's make some jewelry of an empty tomb. Yeah. Well, it's empty. How do we make that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you got to come up with something that represents nothing. And so yeah. you do this half rolled uh, stone, yeah. I guess, is what that is uh, yeah. in front of an entrance. So, yeah, yeah that kind of reminds me of, of something like that. Something uh, I, but I, I saw kept... this. You showed this to me. I had no idea what that was. Yeah, I, I did. I actually just showed it yeah. to you. I said, don't read any of the, the words around it. What is this? And you did not have any idea. So, but again, I've seen this on other Christian websites. So I think this is, this is becoming a thing. And again, Mormons always said, we don't celebrate the crucifixion and that's the cross, right? We celebrate the resurrection. So this 
definitely is attempting to represent the re the resurrection. Well, they've done a fine job. <laughs> they have done a fine job. That's right. Deseret Book has some awesome things there. Okay, let's go to the next one. Maybe feel... they could just show actual Jesus. <laughs> Maybe. Everybody likes representational things. So I feel like as you know, Mormons are kind of given the green light to go ahead and make this a huge celebration that they really are going to take it and run with it. And this is a slide of some ideas. There's some cupcakes with a cross made out of pretzels on them. I thought that was very clever. There's a cross cake, another beautiful cake with some Easter bunnies and a cross. And this one I'm super impressed with, the one on the left. It is an empty tomb. So it's kind of like a bunt cake with a hole in the middle. And it has a donut as the, the stone that rolls in front of it. I just think that's so clever. I, I think if you had a donut for the door on a bunt cake at my house, it would be an empty tomb. <laughs> It wouldn't last long. I get wouldn't that. last long. <laughs> no, nope, no. Nope. But again, these traditions, you know, we love to figure out how can we celebrate this? How can we make it meaningful? And like I said, I feel like they're going to take this and run with it. Let's go to the next slide. So this is a thing that people do in the Christian community. They, I, I read about this, like they take these crosses across country. Sometimes man walks across Texas with cross. So this is a, a picture of two gentlemen who I think they've actually walked a really long way. It was a TikTok video I came across. However, I looked at the bottom of the crosses and they are on wheels. So I'm not sure. She just a, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. But again, I wonder if someday there'll be Easter Trek, right? Uh, you, you could just replace the hand carts with these and yep. pull them across. Yeah. And pull them across. That's what I'm saying. We already have Pioneer Trek and now we're starting to have Book of Mormon track or experience where kids reenact the Book of Mormon over a weekend, the same kind of thing. And with this new emphasis on Easter, why not Easter Trek? Mark my words. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. All right, let's go to our next slide. Okay, so here's the thought behind all this. Um, does anybody remember Brad Wilkins? Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> does anyone remember Brad Wilkins? I always have that reaction when I see his picture. Oh my gosh, I'm sure he's a very nice gentleman. Anyway, Brad Wilcox, um, some conference or something, some talk that he gave where he said, all the rest of the religions are simply playing church. Do you remember that talk? Yeah. Like we're, yes, we're really doing it. Other people are just pretending and playing. Well, I think a lot of people feel right now that the, that the LDS people are playing Easter. Are you getting that sense? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's kind of, well, what is this? Yeah. This is not us. We've, yeah. we've never done this. They're very uncomfortable yep. uh, trying to figure out how they're supposed to celebrate. Uh, yeah, that's week. exactly right. Yeah, I think people from the outside looking in are going, well, this is very different. And people from the inside, like you said, are saying, okay, we're going to go through these motions and try to figure this out. It's very foreign to us, but we're going to learn how to do it. So let's go to the next slide. So I started looking kind of all over social media. And again, everybody is talking about this. They really are. So here's a post I came across that said Mormons attempting to appropriate Holy Week, not even knowing what it is. And it's about somebody who's asking, do you know where a Jewish bakery is? I want to go buy some food for Holy Week. And that's <laughs> not a tradition during Holy Week. And, and this person is trying to answer back and saying, well, no, do you mean Passover? Or like, no, I mean Holy Week. So I think everything's kind of jumbled up in everybody's mind, right? Passover, Holy Week, it's all kind of the same. We just don't know. We just don't understand these traditions. And some of the comments were funny, I thought, or actually very telling. One said, if anyone in the Christian world was doubting Mormonism's place in Christianity, few things sum it up quite like how they're completely missing the plot of Holy Week. But again, it's because we don't know. We literally have been encouraged to kind of stay away and not really learn about anything like that. Do you want to read the next comment? I thought that was interesting. The Mormon church spent the last 200 years calling everyone outside the church Gentiles, and now they suddenly want to bust out with crosses, candles, and Holy Week. Yeah. And this was a long list of comments, all saying the same thing. Um, this other person said, well, I, for one, as a never mo ex-Catholic, am not buying it. So, you know, but again, I feel like how does somebody start a new tradition? I mean, they are trying to change course. And of course, these are baby steps and they're just learning. So I guess we need to cut everybody some slack as they try to navigate these new traditions. Yeah, it's not easy resurrecting Easter. 
Landon and the one-liners. <laughs> yep. The dad jokes. I love it. Okay. Here, here's a really interesting comment. I thought, Landon, do you want to read this one? Without educated professional clergy who know what they're doing, I can imagine what a mess uh, it would be for a Mormon church to try to put on such a ceremony. The priest pastors who lead those things aren't winging it. There are millennia of history behind the, those rituals, and Christian priest pastors and denominations that observe Good Friday have four-year master's yeah. degrees that teach them how to lead them. And no Trinitarian priest pastor in their right mind would ever sit down with an LDS leader to instruct them or show them how to do it, because Trinitarian clergy don't consider Mormons to be Christian. Therefore, the Mormon leadership would need to read through work published by other churches and probably YouTube videos <laughs> to understand how it's done. Then they'd have to train every ward leader how to do it, making sure they don't break copyright law in any material they send out. I don't see it logistically happening. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a very good point. I mean, trained clergy, educated clergy with advanced degrees, you know, they understand the symbolism, they understand the meaning, they understand the scriptures, and this is their, this is the big show every year, right? This is what they're trained to do. Well, they missed one of the things, you know, the big thing that uh, other churches have that LDS wards don't have that prevent them from putting on any kind of a Easter ritual is a budget. <laughs> okay. You couldn't even afford to buy a couple of things of flowers and mm -hmm. bankrupt your entire ward budget. Yeah. So uh, you can't do much when you don't have don't have much, uh, at least the Are wards don't. Are you saying they should hope someone passes away the week before Easter? Yeah. Is that what you're trying <laughs> yeah. to say? And, and you, so they have some flowers there for Easter. Yeah. That would be. Nope. Yeah, it's a good point. But again, they're trying, they're learning, they're trying to do something special for that day. And everybody has to start somewhere. So we'll see. Okay. So I wanted to learn more about Holy Week and even Lent and Easter. Um, so I looked up this guide here and they're all over the place. If you want to know exactly what's going on, um, let's see. So Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter. It's a celebration of Jesus triumphal entry into Jerusalem observed with palm branches, parades and celebration. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what I mean about other churches. Last Sunday, a lot of other churches, they did have ceremonies involving candles or palm leaves, you know, they really do celebrate the symbolism of this. And so I'm curious about that sign that we saw in the slide before that said, celebrate Palm Sunday with us. And it was outside an LDS meeting house. I'm curious what they did for Palm Sunday. If any viewers or listeners attended church on Palm Sunday, I'd be curious to see what they're trying to do because it is a pretty big deal in other denominations. Um, Monday, Thursday, the Thursday before Easter, this is all the week before leading up to Easter, commemorates the Last Supper, often observed with foot washing, um, stripping of the altar, and overnight prayer vigil to keep watch with Jesus in the garden. So they kind of reenact some of those events, don't they? Yeah, do I, I actually way? heard that the uh, First Presidency was going to do Palm Sunday and wave the palms, but Oaks was completely off. <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we go. Left shark again. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. If you don't know what we're talking about, look up the Hosanna shout and President Oaks. That was a really interesting moment of conference. So do you want to read what Good Friday is? Because I believe we are posting this episode on Good Friday, right? The Friday before Easter. Yeah. Good Friday, Friday before Easter, most solemn day of the church year observes the day Jesus was crucified, observed by praying the stations of the cross and three hours of silent prayer while Jesus was on the cross. Right. I can say that never in my life as a Mormon have I ever celebrated Good Friday or really even been told what it was or known that it was something special. I've never done three hours of prayer either. <laughs> I've done three hours of church. <laughs> but you just weren't faithful enough, Landon. And that explains a lot, doesn't it? So, <laughs> All right. The Saturday right before Easter is called Holy Saturday. The Saturday before Easter observes the day that Jesus was in the tomb. This is a day of somber reflection, reflecting on what we'd miss in the world without Jesus. 
So again, all these days leading up to Easter that I never knew anything about growing up LDS. And then what is Easter Sunday, Landon? Hallelujah. Christ has risen. This day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Sing hallelujah and celebrate with great joy. And there it is. And so that's Holy Week. But even beyond that, there are other traditions. Lent um, begins with Ash Wednesday, which is 46 days before Easter, because Sundays don't count, as I understand it. And there are six Sundays. Um, so Ash Wednesday begins with all kinds of different traditions, especially the marking with ash which I remember a situation here in Utah a couple of years ago where an elementary school teacher had a student go in the bathroom and wash off that religious symbolism. And there was a lot of national attention on that. But I kind of felt like if she's just a Mormon teaching school here in Utah, she probably has no idea what Ash Wednesday is. She probably has no idea, you know, that this is a, a very important symbolic event as part of Lent. So and that's it. We're just, we're ignorant. There's no way around it. So there are days of fasting. And in this sense, fasting is one full meal and two smaller meals. I could fast like that. I could do that. <laughs> I would, I would not need my That's a lot it. better definition. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. Uh, yep. And then Lent where you give something up that's meaningful and there's just all these really rich traditions. And so I know right now the church is trying to focus on Holy Week and also Palm Sunday. And I just wonder as we go along, if also Ash Wednesday, Lent, if all these things that are that are practiced by the Christian world at large are going to start finding their way into LDS worship. Wait a minute. What, you, what about days of abstinence? Now that uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's something Mormons do year round. <laughs> okay. Yes. I think there it says no meat. Is that what it says? No, oh, meat? no, no meat. Oh, yeah. well, no it doesn't meat. have quite the sting. No, <laughs> no, nope, nope. and, and again, this is just very basic. These are rich, rich ancient traditions that um, I feel like we're going to see a lot of books coming out at Deseret Book, explaining some of the nuances of this as everybody plays catch up. But again, I commend everybody for trying to, you know, embrace the larger Christian world and introduce some of these traditions because I think it's really awesome. So let's go to our next slide. This is actually off the church website and they have created their own sort of countdown to Easter. And you made some good observations about this, didn't you, Landon? Well, this is this is so Mormon. Uh, j just put a bunch of scriptures out there yeah. and call it call it good. Uh, Sunday, Palm Sunday, triumphal entry. Monday, they don't give it any kind of special name. It's just Monday. Right. Uh, Jesus clears the temple of money changers and family home evening. Uh, Jesus questioned on authority, gives parables, laments over Jerusalem prophecies. It that's Tuesday. Right. Uh, so again, they. This kind of shows they really don't know how to do a ritual or, you know, hey, right. there's a couple of scriptures that describe kind of what happened right. on this these day days. Go ahead this. and read yeah. those. There's yeah. nothing special about the day. You're just supposed to read it. Uh, the, the one that caught me was uh, the uh, Saturday, which they refer to DNC 138. Jesus teaches in the spirit world. Uh, you know, for the rest of the world, he's dead in the tomb right. uh, on that day. Uh, and here, DNC 138, they've taken that. That's very non-Christian. Uh, yes. So they'd have a hard time uh, fitting in with the other Christians celebrating Easter if they refer to DNC 138. So that was, you know, kind of what I'd I noticed. Yeah, they're definitely making it their own. They just kind of go through the scriptures. Wednesday is the day that Jesus teaches at the temple, abides in Bethany, and Judas plots to betray Jesus. Then, of course, Thursday, which was the Monday, Thursday is the Last Supper. Uh, Friday is the trial, crucifixion, burial. And then, as Landon said, in Mormon, uh, the Mormon version is the spirit world. And then, of course, the empty tomb and Jesus is resurrected. And with each of these, there's like on the church website, a unit. You can go in and there are activities and other scriptures. So you really can follow along with your family and try to take them on the journey of what happened with Jesus through that week. So again, that that's awesome. That's great. I think it's great for kids to learn that. I think that's wonderful. So again, they're trying. So. All right. So I decided to go to the church website since I was perusing around it and see what they say in the gospel topics and questions section. 
this is um, sort of a topical guide. You can look up anything and it'll give you um, the church's perspective on this. So first I was really curious about the cross because everybody seems to be wearing a cross and, and Christian jewelry. So, and of course I had to make memes because I always do. Um, it said, and this is from the church's website right now, as of this afternoon, uh, the cross is used in many Christian churches as a symbol of the Savior's death and resurrection. And as a sincere expression of faith, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we also remember with reverence the suffering of the Savior. But because the Savior lives, we do not use the symbol of his death as the symbol of our faith. So that harkens back to what I was taught as a kid. We don't use the cross. So this is on the website right now, but I feel like the membership has moved in a different direction. I feel like they are wearing crosses, using crosses, embracing crosses. Um, there was a big youth conference for young adults in Salt Lake um, last fall. And I ended up, um, don't ask me how, a lot of them were taking like mass transit, like this train back from Salt Lake City. And I ended up on the train with them because <laughs> I was in Salt Lake too. And there were, it was packed. There were thousands of kids and I looked at them and I did see a lot of them wearing crosses. I asked them how the celebration was and they said, oh, it was amazing. It was all about Jesus. I noticed some of them were wearing bracelets that had crosses on them. Um, they just, the cross seemed to be everywhere and just a normal thing that they were doing, something that they were wearing now. So really different from when I grew up, but on the church's website here, it says, it still says that we don't do it. So that's kind of interesting. If someone were to go in and look, they would go, oh, you guys don't wear crosses. Yet, it seems like, well, look at that nativity, not nativity, Easter crash that we just saw where, you know, they are utilizing the cross in a lot of those. So what do you think about that, Landon? I was in Utah County over the weekend, and uh, I was driving back and forth between some things. And I can testify that even if they're not accepting the cross, they are clearly accepting La Crosse because um, I saw La Crosse yes. everywhere in Utah okay. County. <laughs> You're right. It is the sport of sports in Utah County. Yes. The <laughs> cross, La Crosse. Very funny land. <laughs> but the, uh, no, I, 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 I have seen, I, I passed that concert as it was getting out uh -huh. and I saw people and they were clearly into the Christian music, yep. the Christian uh, way of, it looked like what a Christian youth conference would mm -hmm. look like, not what a Mormon youth conference would look like. So somebody's figuring out somebody's got a better program. <laughs> yeah. No. And I, I just remember that when I was on that train, there were also some adults that were there. I think they might've been chaperoners or connected to the single young adults. And so I talked to them and they said, Oh yeah, there were like screens where the lyrics of music and mm -hmm. there were no verses from the book of Mormon. It was all Bible. It was all about Jesus. Um, inspirational talks about Jesus. And they said it was very Christian. You would think you had walked in to a mega church uh, youth revival, but the kids loved it. The energy on that train, it was packed. They were so up, they were so excited. And I keep thinking, hey, you know, I remember the youth conferences from when I was a kid and this seemed like something really different and really fun. They had like a, a band and just all kinds of really awesome energy, I think is what it was. Yeah, I've never been to a, a, a rock band sponsored by a church activity yeah. in my life. I've never seen it. I've I've been asked to buy $40 uh, tickets to uh, the Tabernacle Choir when they came yeah. to Washington State when I lived yeah. there, uh, yeah. but never a band. Uh, yeah. And I think they're realizing kids don't want Mormon Tabernacle Choir. They want um, music. Yeah, and by and by band, we're talking, I think, was it One Republic? Like One it was Republic a, or something, It was a yeah. group. Like it wasn't yeah, just like a band. A it was, yeah, it was a group. So, yeah. okay. So this next one I think is very interesting. So don't forget if we, oops, no, go back to the slide before. Thank you. I'll have you read that. So go back one. Um, so it's, if we think back to the other slides we looked at, we have seen pictures in front of church buildings. Welcome to Palm Sunday celebrate Holy Week with me, go on a Holy Week Easter egg hunt. Everything is about this Holy Week and Palm Sunday. Everything on the church website is all about how to celebrate these events. What are these events? So I thought I would look up Easter in the church topics, um, topic gospel topics and questions section. So why don't you read what we found out about Easter in that section on the church website? 
Latter-day Saints conduct Easter Sunday services, but do not follow the religious observances of Ash Wednesday, Lent, or Holy Week. Wait, 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 Saints, what? Wait. Yeah, that, that's what it says. What? Okay. Now that's almost word for word from that article in the Deseret News where it said an old time encyclopedia of Mormonism from 1992 said this. It says the same thing. It says that on the church website. It says we do not celebrate these things. So that's kind of interesting. Go ahead and read the rest. Latter-day Saint Easter services traditionally review New Testament and Book of Mormon accounts of Christ's crucifixion, his resurrection, and surrounding events. For these services, chapels are often decorated with white lilies and other symbols of life. Ward choirs frequently present Easter cantatas and congregations sing Easter hymns. As as at services on other Sundays, the emblems of the sacrament are passed to the congregation. So in other words, it's not really that much different than any other Sunday. They sing hymns. They just happen to be the Easter hymns. And you might have the ward choir. Uh, yeah. When they say Easter cantata, that's pretty much the ward choir. <laughs> yeah, it is. But I think they need to update it because it says here we do not observe these. And clearly we do because we're inviting people to attend we're giving instructions on how to celebrate, and it's all over the church website. So maybe a little bit of a mixed message just while they're kind of gaining momentum, I think, maybe. Because again, we're starting from scratch. We don't know anything about Holy Week or Palm Sunday, and we're just trying to figure out exactly what's happening. So one of our last questions here is, and Landon and I talk a lot about this, why this push to appear more Christian that we've seen in the last couple of years that's really gaining momentum. Um, if you guys, <laughs> that middle picture right there, if you remember a couple months ago, somebody made the observation that on Google Maps, all the LDS buildings, church buildings and office buildings, things like that used to be marked with an angel Moroni. And all of a sudden that changed to a cross icon, which is how other uh, denominations are marked. And of course, they said, well, this is to make it so that we can be found, because right now, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is its own kind of category. So if somebody typed in Christian churches, that would not come up. Uh, the church also said that somebody at Google must have decided to assign the angel Moroni. I do not believe that. <laughs> I mean, it's possible there was an employee at Google that decided to do that, but I don't think so. Um, I'm not sure how that got there, but it's gone now. Although I think it's still on the church office building and temples. Do you think it's, I think that's, it that's might still be I, on. They only change yeah. the houses. Yeah. Exactly. But otherwise, when you search Christian church, you're going to come up with crosses on all the LDS meeting houses. So that's, I think there's a re I mean, why wouldn't they have changed it? Well, because they don't want Christians showing up at the temple and being told they can't go. In. <laughs> no, that's exactly it. That's why you have an angel Moroni on the temple. I think at least the last time I looked, because you're right. They wouldn't understand. Oh, here's a meeting place. What do you mean? I can't get in. So then I took a picture of the Taylorsville temple, which I see all the time driving on the freeway here in Utah. And from a distance, there's no angel Moroni. It, it has a cross shape on the top. If you look at it, it really has kind of this little, little nub on it. And it looks like a cross. The first time I saw it, I thought it was a cross and I didn't even realize it was a temple. So this is very different from having an angel Moroni or having some other thing that just absolutely does not look like a cross. Don't you think? Yeah, I want to congratulate the Taylorsville members for getting the ugliest temple in the church. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, drove, I drove past it, and I'm like, is that a cathedral being built? I, <laughs> I thought it was a cathedral being built, and it looks like a, like a half-done cathedral. You know, most cathedrals have a lot of architecture and, yeah. and different uh, things on the towers, but these have those little towers, but... It's like they're. It's not complete, uh, but uh, you're saying it's a half-ass cathedral. Is that what it, you're it is? Yes. Uh, Do you know what though? I like this temple because it doesn't look like a traditional temple. I think it it looks uh, really different. So I applaud that. I I, I I'm all for different looking temples, not the standard white. Uh, right. I just think they missed the mark here. But uh, it I did when I first saw it. Uh, the sun was kind of going down. It was in behind, uh, kind of off to the side of this. And it literally, I, I said, it's got a cross on the top. Uh -huh. And yeah. then when I drove up to it, I went, it, I was like, is that a temple? Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't even tell it was a temple until I finally saw a sign yeah. or something that said uh, that there was a temple going yeah. in there. So. 
No, it is. It's very interesting. So what, what do you think, Landon? Why is there this push that we've all noticed to just sort of appear more Christian in every way, not just Easter, not just Holy Week, not just Palm Sunday? What What is going on? It's political to me. Um, the you, You've got the Christian right um, and the Christian right uh, values and what they want for the country align very closely with what Mormons want. And so they see a lot of power in joining each, looking more Christian and getting Christian backing. They've needed Christian churches to uh, file amicus briefs on a lot of the things they're doing uh, with, uh, you know, suing uh, the church to get your tithing back. Churches yeah, there's a new, up. that's in the paper just today yeah. that religions, Christian religions have banded together and said, oh no, you can't give that tithing back to Huntsman, that's going to hurt all of us. So absolutely united yeah. front. They're binding together to keep tax uh, exempt statuses mm -hmm. and, and to fight for churches to have. They're basically fighting to let churches do whatever they want while everybody else bears the burdens of society and churches can do whatever, whatever they want. And we see that with the building codes on the temples uh, mm -hmm. where people say, well, I wouldn't want them to not let me build my church there. Of course, yeah. they wouldn't want a mosque in their backyard, yeah. but they they it's okay if another Christian church is there. So uh, you see a lot of that. They're trying to protect religious freedom in uh, in the U.S., which to me is not a bad thing to protect religious freedom. But uh, they're really protecting religious privilege at this point because religion has a privilege that no other anything gets, and it's kind of funny to me that. You've got all these people with different doctrines that we know are based on myth, and yet they get the privilege, whereas if you're based on sound scientific principles, you get no privilege. Uh, it's kind of interesting, but uh, I'll get off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say- this, We're talking this Easter. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a very happy Easter episode anymore, does it? No, but you're, you're not wrong. Absolutely. There's safety in numbers here, and they definitely have to align- um, and, and I also feel there might be an element, and maybe this just is a byproduct that it is more attractive to young people. I mean, other Christian churches have known how to do young people for a long time, as far as activities and music and keeping them engaged and absolutely completely focusing on the youth. And I think kids see this and they see other denominations and what they have. And I think maybe like that concert that we just talked about that youth conference, um, I think they're trying to engage the youth too. Yeah. And I know people say, oh, come on, that's a little off, you know, but you know, the alternate explanation is we were just wrong. We should have been celebrating it all along. <laughs> exactly. That is the alternate explanation. No. And I think that older members of the church, like I always talk about my parents because they live in a care center and they are living in the eighties church. And maybe you guys can relate to that, having older family members that are living in an entirely different church than you are. And, you know, they'll look at the Leahona magazine and they'll read through and they'll say, well, gosh, there's so many Christian phrases that, that didn't used to be there, like the good news or our friends or, you know, there's, there's just a tone, a lot of pictures of people with guitars, you know, women wearing pants, things like that. <laughs> My parents notice and they're like, what happened to the ensign or enzyme, depending on how you pronounce it, you know, that was very different. That was a very different kind of magazine. And now, you know, it's more of your standard Christian periodical. You get it for free. They pass it out and it just has a lot of feel good information in it. But as much as they try, there are other points where they very much different differ from other Christian denominations. And I think they try to downplay those, but those still do exist. Yeah. And I want to point out if I, I'm I'm going to go back a couple. If you look at this, uh, this is one thing that I see. If you read through here, you notice there's not a single Book of Mormon reference yeah. on there. Yeah. And of course, we know what happened at the resurrection in the Book of Mormon. There were three days of darkness. Uh, hundreds and thousands died. Uh, he killed and burned the cities, uh, earthquakes, the sea swallowed up cities. Uh, you know, tens of thousands of people were killed. I don't see that in here. Um, that story seemed to miss out on Holy Week. And then we had uh, him, you know, making a visit and blessing the children and all of that in Zarahemla. Why don't you see any of those stories mixed in here? 
uh, because that's not very Christian. Uh, and Christians would not recognize that Easter. And yep. so uh, that Easter's left out. That That is a really good point, because when I think about Easter services when I was younger, often the Book of Mormon's you know, chapters were read and referred to in that time. And then of course it was, you know, Jesus would come and he would say, I'm sorry, I killed everyone in your family, but now I love you. And, and that was the happy, the happy Easter message. So, and maybe that's why we didn't celebrate Easter is we didn't want to read from the scriptures about the horrible things that happened. It wasn't a happy time. That's right. It was not a happy reminds- Easter. What it reminds me of, speaking of, of temples, is we have toured two temples in the last three months, I think. And I think we'll be going to the Leighton Temple next, later this week, or later this month, sorry, in April. And the artwork that is that are in these temples, it's all from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Like, I think in the Orem Temple, we saw one picture in the baptismal font of Alma and and a baptismal scene. I think we saw maybe one or two Book of Mormon pictures in the Red Cliffs Temple. It's very heavily Christian, Bible, Old Testament, New Testament paintings. Now, I don't know if they're going to switch those out when the temple's dedicated, but for the rest of the world walking through these temples, it was not foreign. There was nothing that they'd look at and go, what is that story? I don't recognize that, you know, because it's something from the Book of Mormon or from church history. Absolutely no pictures from church history. It was all New Testament, Old Testament. It would be very familiar to anybody going through and they'd go, yeah, this is a this is a Christian place. Yeah. Uh, and, and I would guess that they, you know, put those pictures up for the open house uh, yeah. so that it does look very Christian. Uh, and then they probably swap those around once it comes down, I, I would guess, because we've all seen Book of Mormon pictures in the temple uh, when, when we've gone. So uh, that, that would be my take. But it's exactly that. They want them to think it's a Christian uh, yep. uh, building. And I guess we'll never know unless one of us gets a temple recommend and is able to go through, which I don't know. If I guess we'll never know. Probably let us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. All right. So our final slide just says happy Easter from Mormonish. And again, I love AI made this. I think this is a very sweet picture. It's Jesus sitting with some Easter bunnies and and loving the bunnies. I think it's very cute. So, so I think we've covered it. I hope we have. I mean, our intent is just to say, isn't this an interesting phenomenon that Mormonism seems to be embracing um, the Easter, the Holy Week, the Palm Sunday and all the accompanying activities that the, the wider world of Christianity is. And I think that's positive. Why not make it more of a rich experience for everybody and for whatever your motivations are? And, and we talked about a few, but I don't know exactly. Uh, but, but I just think it's really interesting to talk about. What do you think, Landon? Any final thoughts on Easter? No, I agree with you. I, I think it's a great move to be heading more towards that. I, as an active member, always when I'd go in for Easter, I'm like, aren't we doing something special yeah. for Easter? No. And and then there there wasn't. I, I The only Easter I remember was one fast Sunday where I got up and bore testimony about a, a show I'd seen uh, where they'd found a box or something that said Jesus on it. And uh, and they, they were going, oh, we, we found Jesus's tomb. And, you know, it was something about that the tomb was not empty, you know. Uh, or that the tomb was empty, that we knew the tomb was empty, uh, which, you know, uh, we all we all have things we have to apologize for. But <laughs> how old were you when you did this? <laughs> oh, I don't know, 30 something. Or... Oh, OK. You were an adult. With... OK, yeah, I was thinking you're a little kid on Easter getting up to bear your testimony. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's not how you celebrate Easter. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. But but no, I think I think it's great that they are going yeah. to that uh, because. You know, whether you believe in Jesus or not, uh, you know, the the values that have been taught yep. through Christianity uh, really have changed the world and made a difference. So it makes sense to celebrate uh, the values, uh, even if you don't, you know, I, I don't believe in a literal resurrection. I don't mm-hmm. believe in an atonement, but I believe that Jesus uh, probably existed and was a great teacher and mm-hmm. his philosophies are worth celebrating. So uh, I can join the world in celebrating uh, these teachings that they've come forth and that uh, I think it's a, a great philosophy to follow along with a lot of other philosophies, but why not celebrate it? That's right. I feel like we should say amen after amen. that. That was a beautiful sentiment. That's right. I loved it. <laughs> 
All right. I think we have covered it. And again, we'll say happy Easter for Mormonish. So please comment. Um, have any of you attended an Easter service? Will any of you attend this weekend? We would love to hear back because this year there's a huge push with these signs outside of every building saying there's going to be some kind of a special program. We would love to hear back if anybody's going with family or has family members that go just, just to tell us what, how, what is it like? What are they doing? You know, what, what efforts have they gone to and did it work? Was it a good thing? So we'd love to hear from you on that. Please like, and subscribe to Mormonish. And if you would like to be made aware when new episodes come out, you can hit the notification bell. If you would like to help financially support Mormonish podcast, we always have links in the show notes to Venmo and PayPal and Mormonish podcast.org. And we really thank everybody that does help us financially. We really could not do any of this without you. We have another new link in our show notes and that is what Landon? Our merch. Yep, our merch. We actually have merch. Woo! Mormonish cups if you want to <laughs> support right. uh, and, and uh, drink a little coffee at the same time. That's <laughs> right. We have a whole bunch of other stuff. Look, I have a hat right by me. We have cute hats. We have cute mugs. Anyway, check out the link if you want to sport some Mormonish merch uh, while you're headed around town. So, and again, thank you so much, everybody, for watching and happy, happy Easter. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Mormonish. We really appreciate our listeners and would love to hear from you if you have a story you'd like to share. You can email us at mormonishpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on our website, mormonishpodcast.org. And don't forget to look for us on YouTube and like and subscribe. Keep joyful, everybody.